Hello and welcome to the Quebec channel. I'm Jason, your host. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. Quite early for me, I woke up at 4 a.m. It's about 5.15 now. War isn't good for anybody. Except the military industrial complex. That's all the businesses that um, work in the war R&D, weaponry systems, um, all the manufacturers of ammo and equipment for wars. It is extremely profitable. And a good war now and then really does open up the coffers of the government. I'm not a pacifist and there's reason why we have to have wars. Really sad reasons. You see, I've always seen it as, and from talking to people all over the world via the internet, and being one of the early people who talked to people all over the world, because being a gamer, back in the 70s and 80s, I was on bulletin board systems talking to people from the other side of the world. I very early on in my life, because of spending all my time doing that kind of thing, autism, <laughs> I discovered that people were just people. As weird as that sounds, it doesn't matter what country they were in, what religion they followed, what ideals. Most of them were just like me and you. Um, and that has only got more important to me over the years. I've got friends all over the world who talk to me on Discord and there, who are as real to me as if I met them in the street out there. Most of them are probably autistic or on the scale because we get attracted and it's like gravity that we all come together. Oh yeah, I had a lozenger in. Oh. But war doesn't do any good for the civilians and the soldiers that fight. Entire generations come away hurt. So why do we need wars? Well, the world is split at the moment along quite defined lines. There's leadership in some in some countries, um, Russia, Iran, China, North Korea, parts of the Middle East, parts, small parts of Europe that are run by despots, totalitarian leaders who don't believe in the freedom of their own people, let alone anyone else. Those are, it's like the axes and the allies. It is a pretty defining line. The people who are supporting Russia. Um, and then you've got all the freedom loving sides, Dem democracies. Now, if you take away the big leaders in charge, everybody below that is just people with lives and dreams and goals and fears.
it's and in each country the extremists or the minority but because they shout the loudest an entire country gets torn and feathered by them how many of you have never talked to a russian i mean a normal russian just an average civilian one of my closest friends is russian and he is going through hell see sanctions do not affect putin in russia we have to do them on one level because we're stopping stuff from getting in there to be used to fight against ukraine but the effect on the populace the civilians it's horrible to see the isolation the hatred the price of things it may seem selfish but the simple act of playing computer games and being able to play computer games in Russia unless you pirate them is pretty much now we wanted my we wanted to play minecraft with my russian friend why why should these people be allowed to do this because their country's going to fucking hell and they had can't do much and food's getting more expensive and there's chance of being drafted into an army there's a chance of dying And they can't even just take a break and play games because they can't buy any games on Steam pretty much. Nearly every game on Steam they can't purchase. So even if they did want to, and and actually there is Russians who don't pirate, who don't want to just use wares and that because as they know themselves most of them are hacked most of them are, have got viruses most of them have problems they actually want to buy even though it's extremely expensive they want to buy and they're pretty much not allowed to anymore nearly every game on steam lifts and that is unable to be bought by them oh they should be out stopping their leaders from committing these war crimes and all that that's easy to say from somewhere like america where you are allowed to go outside your house and shout and take a stand if you take a stand in somewhere like russia in one of those totalitarian countries then you will disappear there will be no trial or it will be a fake trial you will end up in Siberia or you will end up on the front lines conscripted into the army with no training and probably no ammo and your gun might not work that's the reality that's why we don't see protests in that anymore in Russia because those that do protest quite quickly disappear and end up in very bad places where you and I don't have to deal with it. It's the extremist. And every country has extremism. Every country has the few that want to fuck it up and watch the world burn. Who don't give a shit. The difference between democracies and the other places was in most of the democracies the leadership at least is they might be corrupt they might be assholes 
but they don't out and out seek to destroy. I've always said that America shouldn't have to be the hammer of the world. It shouldn't have to be the teacher that jumps into every fucking conflict and tries to save people. Yes, with ulterior motives a lot of the time. But the threat that a superpower like America puts on the table means that a lot of the totalitarian groups decide, hmm, not going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this because they might jump in. And that's a good thing at the moment. What do you think is keeping China in place and North Korea in place and Iran in place? Why do you think they spend so much money on proxies like Hamas and Hezbollah and stuff like that and terrorist groups? Because they don't want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with America, basically. Shouldn't be like that. Europe should be pulling its weight more. Um, all the democratic countries of the world should be willing to fight to defend democracy. Because on the other side of the plate, places like Iran and that have no fucking problem. They, they don't limit themselves to the rule set we do. But once again, it's the small... I've got friends in Israel. And for those that don't know, Israel was a mistake. After World War II, yes, the fucking... Jewish people deserved a home state. They deserved a place to live. They deserved a country of their fucking own. Because the genocide that had been committed against them, the attacks against them, had been so horrific. They deserved that. But I think more fucking time and effort should have been put into finding a place for them that didn't mean basically forcing the Palestinian people out of where they had lived for a long time you put a democratic country in the centre of a massive amount of people that hated them surrounded on all fucking sides I have friends who were um, living in the kibbutzes. I was on Discord with one of my friends the morning of the attack. As it happened, I heard his mother, his father shouting, his mother crying as they gathered their stuff to run. And before that, long before that, I had heard about how every day missile strikes from Gaza. You see, people think that, oh, oh, Israel's bad or Gaza's bad. No, it's, it's all a complete mess. And unfortunately, Iran is the ones behind the funding for nearly all the instabilities and terrorist actions. For 20, 30 years. Using proxies to attack Israel and try to destroy them. So Israel became more militant to protect its people. Given its situation, it had to, sadly. But there's no right and wrong. The Hamas terrorists are not the Gaza people are not the Palestinians. The Hezbollah terrorist group is not the normal people in that region that are just suffering and dying.
and war destroys fighters. I mean, people forget just how you'll know you know people who've been to war because they don't want to talk about war. This is the difference. Armchair warriors, they'll talk about war. Generals and that, they'll write a book, they'll talk about war. Most fighters who have been on frontline action never ever want to talk about it. They never want to talk about it. They will. You're lucky to find people who are willing to, and a few can, but most of them they can't. They see such horror that it stays with them for the rest of their life. The suicide rates for veterans is horrific. And the damage done to their bodies over time is horrific. Entire generations are destroyed. And if like the Vietnam War, the politicians in the end decide, oh, that wasn't a good idea, let's not talk about it. Your fucking people went out and died in the thousands. And when they came back, they were treated like monsters. And there still isn't enough reparation for those people that went through that entire war and came back, not as heroes, because they thought they would. They were doing exactly as they were told. They were following orders. They were good soldiers. They were living and dying next to each other. On the battlefield, they lost so many. And when they came back, instead of a ticker tape provide, they were harassed and even now the reparation because america doesn't like to recognize that it's lost the war the only good thing about war is the innovation humans are lazy we are fucking lazy as fuck we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't evolve quickly. But put us in a war, put us in a situation where if we're fucked, oh, we will innovate. We will innovate, we will change, we will drive to kill each other better, we will, and these evolutions in technology will filter through into real life. It's a flaw of humankind. So, I mean, even though I believe that Israel has the right to defend itself, I think the extremists that are propagating all this like and there was extreme even in israel there was extremist i talked to someone a long time ago um about a year into the into about no it was about what a couple a year into the ukraine conflict and then a bit further after when it was just after the attacks the attack on the on um israel and I talked to someone on Twitch um, in private messages. And this person had such absolute hatred for the Palestinian people. He no longer viewed them as human beings. I spent hours and hours talking to this person, trying to get him to understand that, yes, they've done horrific things. Yes, some... The terrorists and the thingy, the, the Hamas are monsters and that. But the actual Palestinian people are actual human beings, just like you. And there was absolutely no way to reach this person. There was no way to think it. And the problem is, 
one of the really big problems in war in that. And this is what your politicians try to do. Is to make you believe that the enemy is evil. That the enemy is a monster. Far easier to kill a monster than a human being. Far easier to commit atrocities against monsters. Against those you have deemed to be less than human. And I saw this in this person that he was... He had gone so far into extreme, he he would not have batted an eyelid shooting a Palestinian child or raping a Palestinian woman or doing any amount of horrific things because they weren't human anymore. I tried to explain to him, tried to reach him, but this was a true extremist. In the end, I had to report the person as I was his concern, because I know people who have been part of the Israel Defence Force, and they're normal, everyday, good people who just want to protect their families and that. This, what I experienced, that was one of my, the true forms of Extremism, absolute and total belief that all Palestinians were these evil monsters. And they all decided it deserved to be called. It was horrible. But I had to try to talk to this person and try to in some way communicate that that and the reason he contacted me. He contacted me because I did a video about how that person you're fighting across no man's land, that person you're fighting on the other side of the fence, on the other side of the country's line, was some, is a human being with fears and hopes and dreams and family. And... He couldn't agree with that when I, because I was talking about everybody in the planet. He he contacted me on, thingy and tried to convince me that the Palestinian people were dogs, less than human. It's sad. It really is. It's not just the people that die in wars. It's the people that are left behind to pick up the broken pieces. And the people in charge, they don't suffer. The people in charge, they rarely... come into fire themselves but we said it'd be better if if politicians and that have problems like this then they should have a death match between them the leaders of each country should fight it out or it should be dealt within some VR arena What can you do? We always seem to be balanced on that precipice. And unfortunately, countries like Iran and that, nobody wants to deal with them, as in to fight them, and because they're a nuclear power, or close to being a nuclear power. Very close. If they haven't already got a nuclear weapon, they're so fucking close, it's scary. And they will use it. Whereas most countries won't. So, bye-bye for now. So